everyone, this is our College Designs. Today I'd like to talk to you about Microsoft Excel and its solver feature. And I'd like to take a look at its capability uh, for solving linear problems, uh, linear programming problems. Here we have an example problem uh, for a company called Rent a Car. And this is a transportation problem. They have two locations from which they'd like to ship vehicles. And in location 1 they have 16 vehicles available and in location 2 they have 18 vehicles available to ship. They have four locations to which they want to ship um, vehicles and the amount that each location um, would like to have is 10. I can probably see already that this is uh, going to be a little difficult because the number of vehicles available, uh, 34, does not match the number of vehicles demanded, 40. So we'll have to optimize uh, and distribute the vehicles as, as efficiently as possible at the lowest cost uh, to these locations, trying to meet uh, these requirements as best we can. These are the costs associated with shipping these vehicles to each of these locations. So for an example the cost of shipping a vehicle from location 1 to location 3 is $54 per vehicle and the cost of shipping a vehicle from location 2 to say location 5 is $19. In any type of transportation problem where you have nodes uh, from which you're shipping and nodes to which you're shipping basically take the first number, the number of um, nodes you're shipping from, and multiply it by the second number, the, the number of nodes you're shipping to, which will give you a number of variables. So here we have eight different variables, and we can call those L13 to represent vehicle shipped from location 1 to 3, L23 for vehicle shipped from location 2 to location 3, and so on and so forth. Again, this is our optimization function, and we'd like to solve this at the lowest cost. We see an equation here. This is the sum product function. Uh, what this does is it takes these numbers here. I'm sorry, B11 through E12. So B11 through E12. It takes these numbers and multiplies them by these numbers and then adds each product. So it would take 54 times whatever number this is plus 17 times whatever number this is and so on and so forth until it gets to 31 times whatever number this is. This gives you the total cost associated with shipping these vehicles. Okay, um, so these are, these are constraints that we're working with. Um, th the vehicles demanded, versus the vehicles available. And here basically we have a small table representing um, the L1 total and L2 total of vehicles shipped. Um, it's a basic sum equation, um, P4 through E4 for this row, representing all vehicles shipped from location 1, and B5 through E5 for all vehicles shipped from location 2. And we want to make sure that this this, these numbers equal these numbers. These numbers need to be less than or equal to these numbers here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go under data, and if you haven't added solver uh, already on your Excel, um, I highly recommend it. It's a very useful um, piece of software that, that is free and it's already included with um, your version of Microsoft Excel. All you have to do is go under file, and this is a Microsoft, uh, 2000, uh, Microsoft Office 2010 version. Uh, but it works in the same way as in 2007. So basically, we go under File, op uh, Add-ins, or Options. I'm sorry. Then you would go under Add-ins, and you would select uh, what you would like to add, and then Solver, Add-in, will be right here. And then you just click Go, and then OK. And this adds Solver under your Data tab here. So we click on Solver. 
Okay, and it's asking us for our set objective. Our set objective is basically what we like to minimize or maximize. We want to maximize profit and minimize cost. So we would minimize and we would select this cell here. By changing variable cells means which variables are you going to manipulate and that those are going to be your empty tables. So we're going to select these cells here and add them in. And subject to constraints, we have a demand constraint and then an availability constraint. We also have a non-negativity constraint. Um, it's very simple actually, you just click this little checkbox here and that ensures that none of your variables are going to come back as negative because we can't ship a negative amount of cars. Um, it just makes things easier. Okay, so let's delete these real quick and click add. So our first constraint is going to be our supply constraint. This is our left left hand side on the equation and we want these to be equal to these numbers here because we want to ship all cars we have available um, to these locations. We already have a shortage anyways. Okay, and then our second uh, constraint will be um, these numbers, the number supplied, which uh, I forgot to mention, uh, these, cell, these cells are calculated by um, B4 and B5 summed together uh, to give you the number supplied. So whereas we're summing horizontally here, we're summing vertically each column here. So less than or equal to, this is right, and then our, our last part of the constraint is the right hand side of the equation. Repeat this here, click OK. We already have our non-negativity constraints. Uh, you do want the simplex linear programming method. The other methods um, don't really make sense to use them because it's a linear programming equation. Any equation that you can um, represent in the form of A1, X1 times X1 plus A2 times X2 and so on and so forth is a linear programming equation. Okay, and then we click Solve. And I'd like to show you something else. This, these are the reports. And let's click on Sensitivity Reports, Answer and Limits. This is very useful. Click that, and they populate here. And this is this is our optimal solution. Basically, Solver is telling us that we ship zero cars from location one to location three because if we see here, this actually makes a lot of sense, the cost is almost double, uh, or more than double, uh, to ship from location 1 to location 3 than from location 2 to location 3. So we maximize the number of cars here. Um, we move on to this. Um, same thing, this is, this is a small price differentiation. Um, 2 here, 8 here, uh, more cars are shipped from here to here because the price is getting lower. And then um, the very last cell only four vehicles are shipped to this location. Okay, and this this is the total cost um, to ship these vehicles, seven hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Uh, and we see here that our numbers do match; they are equal. So this is a good solution. Uh, going through the reports, uh, this is just some generic information. Uh, okay, and basically it tells you your final value. Um, original value and then final value for all your variables. We see here zero um, ships, ten ships from location one to location four. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a summary of your results and it tells you which constraints are binding. Uh, so the supplied for location six uh, is a binding constraint because it's, it's not a binding constraint because you have a slack of, of six, you have uh, leftovers. Everything else, though, is binding because um, we ship all vehicles to these locations. They're they're fulfilled. Uh, Ten. This location, uh, location six, only receives four vehicles, um, so it has six more to go. So changing this or increasing the number of vehicles um, will ba will basically finish off the inequality or the equality. This is your sensitivity report and it tells you uh, within what range is your optimal solution going to remain the same. Uh, so for these variables here, 
um, you can you can for, for example allowable increase you can increase um, the number here as much as you like uh, it's not going to make much of a difference to the equation but if you decrease it by a factor of 26 um, then it, it's going to change your optimal solution and th this only holds true um, for one variable at a time all else being equal once you start changing multiple variables at the same time um, then this report no longer holds because the solver can't predict um, these calculations. Okay, and this is your limits report. Um, basically, gives you your lower limit and your upper limit for all your variables. And again, displays the total objective function value. Uh, this has been a demonstration of uh, Microsoft Excel solver capabilities. Thank you for tuning in to our College of Design.